So recently we had a belated secret Santa and the person who got me made a little surprise package and as you might be able to see he drew his inspiration from one of my earlier videos which is really funny I had no idea he would do that um, so he gave me two presents one was a USB to Ethernet adapter which was here and which obviously has the USB leads and the uh, Ethernet leads coming in and the other thing he got me was a HDMI cable which when it's rolled up kind of looks like an inductor so uh, he made this the heart of the power supply with the uh, two switches going in and uh, I'll put capacitor here <laughs> how cool is that well aside from that which was just super cool to get uh, I also got this in the mail and uh, I was hit up by somebody username double i double n c period on uh, the tweakers uh, website which is a dutch tech forum uh, he sent me this which is addressed to mux so very good that's my name um, and i uh, already know what's inside but i decided to keep the unpacking for this video it is yeah, I don't really. A Lenovo AC adapter, which is going to be a pretty good quality power supply uh, for me to tear down. So let's go. Now, first of all, um, I get this question on literally every of my videos and all of my blogs previously, which is how do I know if a power adapter is good? What's a good quality power supply? How can I recognize it? Uh, I will be doing a full video, just like a short three minute video, uh, how to identify a good power supply. But one of the first things you can do just by looking on the outside is look at all these uh, regulatory markings. The three big ones always to look out for are UL, CSA and TUV. And in this case, uh, we see two out of three. Uh, we see UL markings here and here and we see the TUV marking here it's in very small lettering and one thing uh, with power supplies you want to look out for is that it says this big UL logo uh, sometimes this is the UL logo is actually like a backwards R and U I don't know why but I mean their choice I guess but it has to say listed ITE power supply and it has this number here in this case it's E131881 US and that number you can punch into the website of UL, ul.com and you can get the certification of this power supply another thing to remark about these power supplies is um, like many manufacturers do uh, they say this 65 watts 20 volts and as you might know most laptop power supplies are 19 volts or 19 and a half or 18 and a half volts i guess this this just works into the psychology of people they think that 20 19 19 and a half volts that's all like this really big difference and that you should never attach a 20 volt power supply to a laptop that's supposed to have 18 and a half or the other way around uh, essentially they're all the same uh, this this voltage there's a reason why it's roughly this voltage it's not actually exactly this voltage because they have a slightly higher output voltage to counteract uh, voltage loss in the cables basically they're all the same and this is just basically marketing to make sure that you buy their own power supplies fender lock-in anyway enough uh, banter about this uh, let's open it up again uh, we're dealing with a ultrasonically fused outside shell uh, this one is probably high quality so we're definitely gonna have to use the Dremel to crack it open uh, we're not gonna have such an easy time as with the uh, Cubi 7 power supply well it's actually a couple of days later and I improved my lighting situation here uh, slightly moved stuff around also turned off auto white balance because it doesn't work as always anything automatic doesn't work 
Except for automatic cars, I guess. I don't know. I guess they don't really work that well either. Anyway, I uh, dremeled open the um, Lenovo power supply. Uh, it's really as easy, easy as it seems. It's very messy. Uh, you just take uh, one of those ceramic cutting wheels and uh, put it at like 4000 RPM and uh, go around the edge. And then it should just uh, fairly easily crack open. All right, it's uh, open now. Um, and here we see what I talked about in the last video I did. Uh, EMI shielding. So here we have a couple of, this is actually a bit extra. I, I didn't realize it was in here. Uh, inside the plastic case they put these uh, aluminum foil stickers um, to do some extra bit of EMI shielding. And we have a fairly thick aluminum shield. This has two functions. Uh, it uh, does both EMI shielding, it's uh, grounded, or yeah, it, at least it's held at one potential, uh, so it doesn't radiate by itself as an antenna. And uh, obviously it also dissipates some heat, or at least it spreads some heat around so it can be more easily uh, dissipated by the plastic casing. Anyway, on to the actual teardown. Uh, there's obviously some uh, plastic to protect the insides, which contain the uh, conductive bits from the screening. And this is glued on, and there is some more screening in there. So there we go, uh, we're in. So immediately what you can see, and which is very typical for laptop power supplies, is that almost every crevice is filled with uh, white goop to make sure that if you throw this around and if this hits the ground, that components don't just uh, wiggle around like this one, which is not quite <laughs> gang dan. Uh, they, they don't wiggle around and break off inside. So here is the uh, power supply degunked, and uh, immediately we can see some interesting things going on. Um, first of all, here is the power inlet, and we see that they actually ran a wire like this to here. So uh, either neutral ground is going here, and the other side is going here, into a fuse, and apparently into a common mode choke, uh, which is also connected to this one. So this is where the power comes together uh, into a big capacitor, another common mode choke. So we're seeing a full implementation here. Uh, this seems to be an MOV, it's heat shrunk. Uh, so I can't immediately see what it is, but it's... No, actually it says NTC1. So that's, a, um, that's an NTC, so inverse current protection. I'm not seeing an MOV here, so that's... Uh, negative marks. Then it goes into a bridge rectifier and into the bell capacitor. So there is obviously no power factor correction here, which is uh, kind of on the edge for these power supplies. It is, um, it's a 65 watt power supply. So uh, you're supposed to do power factor correction uh, in power supplies from 70, 75 volt amps upwards. I think this is gonna draw a bunch more than uh, 75 volt amps. So a typical power supply like this without PFC is uh, going to have a power factor of about 0.63 in normal use. Uh, so at 65 watts, that's uh, just over 100 volt amps. So I would um, prefer to see power factor correction in these power supplies. Then the uh, rest of the power supply, at least what we can see at the top side, uh, we see that the ground lead goes all the way to the secondary side, so the secondary side is properly grounded. Uh, that's very good that they have a positive connection all the way to that side. Then here in between the main bulk capacitor and the uh, transformer, we can see the switching MOSFET. It's only a single FET, so this is going to be a quasi-resonant converter, almost certainly. Uh, we see here that part that I'm kind of obscuring when I tap it, uh, is a resistor that's going to be the current sense resistor. There's some other part here which seems to be a small capacitor, so I think that is going to be part of the snubber network. It could also be a diode. Uh, it's heat shrink all the way, so it's very hard to see. 
There's a tiny capacitor here that's going to be the um, low voltage power supply for the switcher chip that we're going to see on the other side. And then there's this, which is a very nice touch, a small temperature sensor that was tucked in here against the transformer, um, obviously doing some kind of high temperature cutouts, which is a very good safety feature. Something else we can see if we lift this out of the way is there's an optocoupler under there. So it's got feedback, obviously. Here on the secondary side, we see a uh, package, which is almost certainly, yep, it's a diode. Two big capacitors, which are Nichicon, which is a very good brand. And they're also 105 rated, and they are, I think, HDM series which I don't recognize off the bat, but I'm sure it's, uh, it's a high quality brand. Uh, I think I forgot this one. This looks like a Nippon Chemicon. 105 degree rated. That's funny, it says 4V. I don't think it's 4 volts. I think it's... Uh, yep, I see the uh, Nippon Chemicon brand there. Oh, it's the CLA series which is a general purpose high voltage. Aside from these capacitors, there is absolutely no output filtering, so no LC filter, which I would have liked to have seen. Uh, but they do have a current shunt here, so they do over current protection. Looking at the reverse side, in general, first of all, very good solder quali quality, uh, just excellent. It's obviously wave soldered. Um, even the connections to the um, this is the earth connection and this is the positive and negative output uh, connection. They seem to be hand soldered, but hand soldered very well. Uh, solder is shiny, which is interesting. That would mean uh, we're dealing with leaded solder. Aside from that, we see uh, these little spacer rubbers. Also, I uh, just saw the UL marking and uh, let me just put this on the screen. Kunshan Wanjing printed circuit board co-limited in Zhandeng economic development zone in Kungshan. I don't recognize where that is exactly. Uh, I've only been in a couple of places in China. Uh, here is the fuse and it's very nice that they made the effort to put in an isolation slot so that if the fuse breaks there is no chance of arcing over uh, over the PCB when there's like dust or grime. Uh, very good. Uh, again we see here is a common mode choke and we see the high voltage um, spark gaps, kind of okay. I don't really care much for them. Bleeder, and bleeder resistors on the um, uh, filter cap. And going into the uh, diode bridge here. And then of course to the meat of the operation. And here we see, okay, so this is interesting, um, just looked it up. This chip is marked DAP8A. Uh, that's actually a shorthand or some, some kind of manufacturer specific marking for the NCP1200, which is um, a current mode controller for low power universal offline supplies. It's very interesting to find these uh, very, very rock bottom um, low end chips in these power supplies and actually it's still a brand name, it's an on semiconductor um, brand chip, uh, but it's like 10 cents or something. Uh, there are much more expensive controllers available. Uh, also interesting to note is that this is actually uh, supposed to work offline, which means it works off the mains directly, which means you don't need an auxiliary power supply, but it still has an auxiliary power supply. So a couple of Zener diodes, this is quite complicated to go through uh, so I won't. Uh, basically, it's a quasi-resonant converter. On the secondary side, let me just flip it over here. Uh, we have an ST... This is an STDAS001, which is basically a dual op-amp. Uh, and they obviously use this for um, overcurrent protection. So they have some kind of voltage divider that they uh, compare to a, uh, the current shunt, which is here, so here, between here. 
that goes into some kind of op amp configuration and um, they have the second op amp usually configured uh, as a comparator uh, so it goes um, completely shuts off the power supply when overcurrent is uh, hit and aside from that uh, this is obviously a TL431 um, preference that they use for the voltage feedback to make sure that the output is exactly 19 or 20 volts or slightly above. Also nice to note is that uh, I'm seeing a ferrite bead here, so it's not true that they do absolutely no uh, output LC filtering. They have a ferrite bead. They actually have a second ferrite bead here uh, that apparently kind of connects the same way around. Yeah, this is um, this is the output, the positive output of the transformer. It goes through a ferrite bead into the diode and then through another ferrite bead into the uh, capacitor. So they do some uh, high frequency noise filtering on the output. So that's basically all I can say about this power supply. And um, I'll quickly go over through two frequently asked questions. First question, can you test these power supplies on a uh, like on an electronic load or can you see the oscilloscope pictures of the output ripple and that kind of stuff? Uh, the answer is no, not yet. Um, I am in the process of building a power supply tester uh, and this will be done in about a month's time. Uh, however, currently it's not available to me. The second question is, is this power supply any good? And possibly a variation on that question is, how do I see if this power supply is good? Well, the easiest way to know if this power supply is good is to see if it's UL listed. And it is. Everything in it is UL listed. It's using good quality components. Even if I have some remarks about uh, badly placed sticky pads and no PFC and that kind of stuff, it's still compliant, which means that people have thought about it, people have looked at it very carefully and seen that there is basically no big hazard in this power supply and there is no way for that hazard to arise either. So it's good. Doesn't mean it is the most efficient or has the best output power quality or has the longest life. Uh, it just means it's good, it's safe to put uh, in your mains power supply. So that's it for this time. Uh, See you next time.